Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Recently, Dr. John Campbell started a video by saying he was going to respond to some criticism of a previous video. I was delighted because usually now John just ignores people who point out that he has got information wrong. Could this be the start of John going back to the more reasonable John from earlier in the pandemic? Unfortunately, no. John just responded to the criticism with more misinformation. Let's have a look. Now, I'm going to start off by um, answering some of the critics about uh, yesterday's video with Senator Rennick and the video we did on the uh, Western Australia. Um, data that they've published on vaccine adverse reactions. Now, this is the excess mortality in Australia for May uh, 2021. And that's for June, that's for July, that's for August, that's for September. October, it was up to over 7,000. And that's data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics that we looked at uh, yesterday. Now, the critique has been that, well, there's a pandemic going on, you would expect excess deaths. But if we look at this graph here for Australia, we actually see that in 2021, Australia actually didn't have a pandemic. Um, the cases in Australia, well, there were a few there in September 21, but very, very few. Basically, the pandemic in Australia started with the new year of 2022, because, of course, Australia was largely locked down. And it's especially the case for Western Australia that was locked down for slightly longer than the rest of Australia as a whole. So we see that the Australian pandemic was really quite delayed. And if we look at that in comparison, say, to the United States, so we see that in the United States, and this is just official cases that have been recorded, we see there was a lot of cases in uh, 2020, 2021 in the United States, in blue, uh, but uh, in Australia, we've got the big Omicron wave there in the United States and Australia. But we see while Australian numbers remained high, the United States numbers went down because the whole Australian pandemic was kind of uh, moved along a bit because of their lockdown measures. So this uh, excess mortality, we can say definitively that uh, the 7,129 excess deaths in October 2021 in Australia were not due to the coronavirus infections per se, at least the vast majority of them, they were due to some other cause. So if you accept what John says at face value, he seems to have answered his critics and no doubt his fans are totally convinced. But there are two problems with what he claims. Firstly, you can't actually determine what the mortality from COVID should be in Australia by just eyeballing a graph of cases and pointing out that the cases were lower than the US. But that's only a minor point. The bigger issue is that Johnny's wrong about there being over 7,000 excess deaths in Australia by the end of October 2021. Embarrassingly wrong. He's got this number by subtracting the deaths that occurred in 2020 from the deaths that occurred in 2021. That's not how you determine excess deaths. To start with, the number of deaths in 2020 were actually below normal because the various measures deployed in Australia to control COVID reduced other infectious diseases as well, which reduced our death rate. Also, Deaths in Australia do generally increase each year as we have a population that is both growing and ageing. And you can see this trend clearly if you look at the pink line, which follows the early peaks of expected mortality. And I will come back to these two figures that I've just shown you and go over them in more detail later in the video. So what John claimed were excess death numbers weren't. He just has no idea how to determine excess mortality. Luckily for us, there are people who do. And some of these people work for the Australian Bureau of Statistics. And luckily again for us, 
they have recently published a report that looks at excess mortality during the COVID-19 pandemic until the end of the first quarter, 2023. And this table summarises the information by year. As I previously mentioned, in 2020, excess deaths were negative with 5,228 less than would be expected. Now, if we go to 2021, which is the year that Johnny's getting all excited about, because it was the year we rolled out the vaccine, you can see that the excess mortality is 2,000. 378, just a bit lower than 7,000. But some of this could be natural variation. So they also include the number of deaths above the usual variation, which is 355. In other words, 355 is a statistically significant excess mortality for 2021. Now, John's claim was that the excess mortality in 2021 couldn't be from COVID because there was no pandemic in Australia in 2021. And therefore, there must be something else that happened in 2021 to cause the excess mortality. Ding, da, ding, ding. In fact, the number of COVID deaths in 2021 was. 1,415, which is, of course, much higher than the 355 deaths that were above natural variation in 2021. In other words, all statistically significant excess deaths can be explained by COVID, contrary to John's claim. So, alas, the old John isn't back. We still have the new John spreading misinformation. Whether this is intentional or due to ignorance or a bit of both isn't entirely clear. Anyway, while we're here, let's have a look at a bit more of the ABS report. Now, in 2022, excess mortality was 18,634. And 10,587 of these deaths were above the usual variation. Over the same time, deaths from COVID or with COVID were 13,154. So again, all the statistically significant excess mortality can be explained by COVID. Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, John has made rather a large number of videos about excess deaths. You could be forgiven for thinking that this is the first time excess deaths have happened, and that is why he's so outraged by it all. In fact, that's not the case. This figure here shows the expected versus actual mortality from 2013 to 2023. The dark blue line shows expected mortality and the light blue shading shows the 95% confidence interval, which is what was referred to as usual variation in the previous tables. The yellow line shows the actual mortality. As you can see, excess mortality also occurred in 2014, 2015, and 2017. And needless to say, this wasn't from COVID. It must have been from something else that happened in those years. And if you look at 2017, you can clearly see that the excess mortality is much higher than in 2021, which is the year that John was getting so outraged about. As you can see marked on the figure, there was a flu epidemic in Australia in 2017. And there were, in fact, 1,255 influenza deaths reported that year, which is slightly less than the 1,415 COVID deaths reported in 2021, even though the overall excess mortality was higher in 2017. 
Where was the video from John expressing his outrage and demanding answers in 2017? To be fair, though, he lives in England, so he may not have been paying as much attention to Australia as he does now. But of course, it wasn't just Australia that experienced excess mortality. It also happened in the UK in the following winter from 2017 to 2018. In fact, in the 2017 to 2018 winter period, there was an estimated 50,100 excess winter deaths in England and Wales. Another interesting fact was that excess winter mortality doubled amongst males aged 0 to 64 years between 2016 to 2017 and 2017 to 2018. Doubled. And nearly two-thirds of these deaths were not caused by respiratory diseases. John should have been outraged and demanding answers as should have all the other people currently banging on about the current excess mortality. But we heard nothing. Now, of course, at the time, John was focused on nurse training videos, which were actually very good. So it's fair enough that he wasn't covering the excess mortality in 2017 and 2018. What doesn't make sense, though, is that now he is focusing on excess mortality. Why isn't he asking questions about other times it has happened? I mean, a doubling of excess mortality in males 0 to 64 is pretty substantial, and we should be talking about it. And there are lots of other examples for him to get out raged about. It is well known that there is excess mortality from all causes during epidemics of respiratory diseases. This paper was published in 1932, which was before vaccines were available for influenza. And it looked at a number of epidemics over a period of 15 years. And what the author found was that in every case, the excess mortality from all causes was appreciably higher than the excess mortality credited to flu and pneumonia. I mean, this is outrageous. History is repeating itself again and again, but no one is talking about it. When we have epidemics of respiratory diseases, there is an increase in excess mortality. Why aren't more people talking about this instead of pretending that excess mortality this time around is something new. It's scandalous. You can see that I am barely controlling myself here. Yeah, okay. I'm not that good at acting. I'll keep practicing. Anyway, let's go back to the Australian Bureau of Statistics data. This is a blow up of the previous chart, which just shows the pandemic years. But what they have also done here is they have added an extra line which is deaths that occurred that weren't reported as COVID. And that's the ready brownie coloured line. If you compare this line with the yellow all-cause mortality line, you can see that when COVID mortality is up, mortality from other causes is also up. As I said previously, history is repeating itself and no one wants to know. Now, just before we finish up, I would like to mention that a second analysis of excess mortality was undertaken by the Australian Actuaries Institute's COVID-19 Mortality Working Group. There's a mouthful for you. And they came up with fairly similar results for excess mortality. The biggest discrepancy is the estimate for the March 2023 quarter. The main reason for the difference in the March quarter comes down to choice of the model shape. The ABS used a model that has a predefined, lovely, smooth shape, while the Australian actuaries have chosen something a bit uglier that they think more closely reflects the actual shape of the data. Karen Cutler from the Australian Actuaries Institute believes that the differences in excess mortality between the models will become closer as the year progresses because the greatest differences between the models are in the summer months, which is the data that we have available at the moment. 
So in summary, John is just plain wrong about the excess mortality in Australia in 2021. He hasn't responded to his critics. He has just continued uncritically reporting misinformation. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thanks to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here a treat, although the way she keeps sleeping on the job, I'm not sure whether she should really get all the treats, but yeah, she's cute. I'll still give her treats, don't worry. Anyway, we really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.